Good evening. There's this really great story, um, a true story, about a guy who is walking along the Niagara River. Uh, and this is a picture of the Niagara River in the winter. And he was going in the winter, and he's walking along the river in the winter, um, enjoying the scenery. And all of a sudden, he sees something in the river, floating in the river. Um, and most people would assume that's a log or something like that. But all of a sudden, he realized it wasn't a log, it was a person. And he went rushing down to the edge of the river, and he was able to pull the person to shore, um, give them his jacket, get them to uh, an emergency services, and the person was saved. And this amazing act of compassion made headlines, um, great news, and a great story. Now, let's say hypothetically that this person, when he's finished with this, and he's trying to process the experience, he's probably tweeting about it. Um, let's say he starts walking down the river again, and all of a sudden he sees somebody else that's floating in the river. And he rushes down to the river again, and he grabs this person, and he pulls the person ashore. Same thing, another great act of compassion. This time has to give a sweater. Um, gets the person to the hospital, the person's okay. Um, goes on Facebook, you know, puts this new status. And then all of a sudden, he keeps walking down the river, and there's somebody else that's floating down the river. Now, these are all acts of compassion, and acts of compassion are incredibly necessary in our world. In fact, we need more of them. Um, but the reality is that, that they need to go farther. And in this situation, uh, unless he starts asking some really deep questions, the situation doesn't get solved. And at that point, when he starts asking questions like, what's going on in the river? What's going on upstream? Like, who's pushing people in the river? Or why are they falling in the river? But at that point, when he starts asking those questions, he's seeking something different, which is justice. Um, and for me, justice is essentially, it's a, it's a crucial part of, of development work in the world. But from my experience, um, human connection is what motivates us to seek justice. My wife and I lived in uh, Costa Rica. Um, for over a year, and we did some development work there, and we, were, we spent some time in Nicaragua, and um, this young boy, Carlo, came up to us at a bus stop and uh, was asking for some money, and my wife and I just struck up a conversation with him, and we sat down and gave him some food and, and hung out for a while, and um, there were three things that really jumped out at us with our conversation with Carlo. The first thing was, uh, he was nine years old, and he stood no taller than my five-year-old daughter does today. So obviously years of malnutrition and living on the streets and working on the streets had taken its toll and stunted his growth. The second thing was it was Tuesday in the morning and Carlo wasn't in school and said he was with us. Um, so it was obvious that this was his profession, that instead of going to school, he, he had to beg on the streets. And the reality was that in 20 years, without an education, his prospects would be incredibly slim and the fact he'd be still begging on the streets but making no money because nobody gives money to a 35-year-old but they'll give money to a 9-year-old. And then the third thing that totally blew me away was the, we mentioned that we were going to Costa Rica and he didn't respond by saying, you know, where's Costa Rica or maybe where in Costa Rica. Um, uh, but instead he said, what is Costa Rica? And I remember when he said that, my wife and I just were speechless. All of a sudden the reality of what poverty was doing in the world struck us like a wave. And all of a sudden justice was different because justice became personal for us. Because through that human connection, all of a sudden poverty was a face and a name and a smell and, 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 it, and, it was, and there was so much more associated to it. We started asking the tough questions um, that happens when you seek justice in the world and all of a sudden we didn't have any answers. Uh, but a few months later we came home, came back to Canada and I went into teaching and um, eventually came here to Huron Heights and I, and I opened a, and, and, and started a program called Outreach, which is uh, an international development program um, where I take students uh, to various developing countries every year. Um, but one of the main reasons why I wanted to develop this program was it was an opportunity for me to seek justice. Carlo gave me a motivation, gave me my why, why I should seek justice in the world. And what I wanted to do was try to pass that motivation, pass that why on to, on to students. Um, here are a couple of the, the, uh, the trips that we've gone on. In, in 2009, we went to Costa Rica, um, and we, uh, we worked at an orphanage, and the, the orphanage takes students that are aged 2 to 9, 10. Um, some of them have parents that are prostitutes. Some of them parents are drug addicts. Some of the parents beg on the streets. But these kids are here every day. Um, they get three meals. They get an education. And, they, and the hope is that by providing that and love, that these kids can break that cycle of poverty that their parents are trapped in. Um, but these kids became the why. They became that motivation for my students then to seek justice in the world. 
In Cuba, 2010 and 2011, um, we worked in an organic oponico, which is an organic garden, um, where there are farmers that are 60 plus year, years old and they, they make around $20 a month. And uh, at the end of working with them for a week, um, they had a little party for us and they had fruit and cracking coconuts and typical North Americans, we had very little to offer, so we brought pop. Uh, but we handed out pop in 40 degree weather and thought it would be a, you know, a big treat and uh, a number of the men didn't drink the pop and so students came back up and said, Mr. Holmes, I don't know what's going on, like they're not drinking the pop. Um, but then we find out that a number of them put the pop away and we're going to take it home because it was such a huge treat, they didn't want to, they didn't want to drink it themselves. Uh, there was another man that didn't know how to open a can of pop. But they became, those men became a why, they became a motivation, right, for the students to seek justice in the world. In uh, 2012, we went to uh, Chile, and this is in Santiago. Um, we worked in the slum, we built a playground. In uh, 2013, we, we went back to Chile and we worked um, in another slum. We built a playground slash community plaza. And then um, this past year, we went back to Chile and we worked in a school. Um, but in all cases, we, we were, were doing life with the marginalized. And when you do that, when you do life with the marginalized, you start to understand them. And in this situation, we start to realize that kids um, among the marginalized in Chile would be lucky if they can get, a, get to grade 8. If, if, if they get to grade 8, that's a huge accomplishment because usually they drop out to work. They became the why. They became the reason and the motivation for my students to seek justice. Now, human connection is essentially at the heart of development work. And the reason is because with human connection, we start to see ourselves in the lives of other people. And with human connection, we start to understand what it's like to live without education. We start, to, we start to understand what it's like to have insecurity in housing and insecurity in food, to not know, you know where the next meal is going to come, to understand what it might be like to be homeless, to understand what it's like to be unloved. And human connection gives us that. It also helps us understand that our position in life and our lot in this world um, it has nothing to do with our skills and abilities. It has everything to do with a great coin flip, the lottery of life, geographic luck, and where you were born. And for my students, seeking justice became personal. And in the end, if we really want to seek justice for the marginalized in our cities, in our countries, in our communities, in the world, we have to see it as our responsibility. Thank you very much.